Hi, uh, this is Mitch, and I wanted to show you something that I made. I've been working on the last couple of days, and uh, it's what I call the $7 centrifuge. I needed a centrifuge at home so that I could check my own hermetocrit uh, reading, and I priced them on the internet, and regular medical grade centrifuges are anywhere from $400 used to $4,000 and I didn't really want to invest that kind of money in it because I may not need it that long but uh, so I thought I would try to make one and there were several designs on the internet and I checked them out but they didn't accommodate the microfilament tubes uh, and a microfilament tube is like a one and a half millimeter diameter glass tube that uh, you put blood into and it uses a capillary action so after you prick your finger you put this glass tube up to the blood droplet and it just sucks it up into the tube and after you get the tube 75 percent full uh, you can put it in a centrifuge and you spin it and then the centrifugal force uh, will cause the red blood cells to move to the bottom of the tube leaving the plasma portion at the top and then uh, after it's separated you can measure uh, measure the entire length of the fluid in the tube and then uh, divide that into the length of the column of red blood cells and then you get your your percentage of red blood cells and uh, that's your hermetocrit number so um, i think i can do this at home and I wanted to try, so I made a $7 centrifuge. I don't have my hermetocrit tubes in yet. They should be in any day. So I use Q-tips to kind of simulate having some kind of mass in there. And uh, I wanted to tell you about how I came about making this. It was pretty easy. It didn't require a lot of uh, great engineering skills. As you can see, it's really kind of uh, crude and kind of ugly but uh, it's just a prototype to see if my design works and so far everything that I've done to test it so far is doing pretty good uh, so what I have what my thumb on is on here is a uh, heat sink out of a computer uh, those are pretty easy to come by I went to the uh, computer recycling center and uh, I asked him for a computer uh, fan a cooling fan which that's the black part sitting on top of it and he gave me this and I decided to keep the heat sink because it everything else is really light and the heat sink adds some mass to it so this thing weighs about half a kilogram so or about a quarter of a kilogram so it gives it some weight and uh, that'll keep any vibration from causing it to walk across the table as it spins so I left it on there you don't have to you, uh, you wouldn't have to use that. I kind of like having the extra mass there. And then uh, there's a 12 volt cooling fan. It's an Asus. And uh, you, might, you might get a 12 volt. It's a little bit easier to uh, find transformers or converters uh, for your AC, your home AC electric, uh, to transform it or to change it down to 12 volts DC. Uh, they're pretty popular, pretty cheap. You may even have one laying around your house. Uh, I did. Uh, well, I couldn't find one, actually. I couldn't find a 12-volt. So I took this accessory plug here for an auto, auto accessory. And I cut it off. And then I just spliced in the wires to the leads. And then I just plugged it into a 12-volt power supply that I happen to have at home. So that's what I'm using right now. <clears throat> excuse me but I also have one of these transformers that will take the 120 volt from my my home electrical down to 12 volt DC so that'll allow me to plug it into the wall if I ever need to uh, the cord isn't very long so I'm using this and uh, I think it'll do just fine for now so uh, what else do we have uh, on top of the fan laid hub in there you see something kind of shiny that is a fender washer uh, and it is glued to the hub of the fan blade 
and it's a circle and it's about 35 millimeters in diameter so I got a washer to closely approximate that that length that diameter and I glued it right to the hub using Gorilla Glue and Gorilla Glue is nice uh, in two ways for this application uh, one is it glues just about anything to anything else and two it doesn't set up real quickly so it gives you about 10 or 15 minutes to center that on on the hub so that it doesn't vibrate when it spins so it's kind of hard to get something centered uh, without a, an instrument to do that so uh, I used a straw I'll show you how I did that a little bit later you might find it helpful uh, and on top of the steel washer in there are two rubber washers they're a little bit bigger as you can see than the steel and that gave me something to, to glue the disc to this is just a CD disc of course and everybody's got those laying around and the parts are made out of uh, what's called foam core uh, it's this white board and foam core is really cheap you can buy it at Walmart you can buy it at Hobby Lobby you can buy it in any place that sells craft supplies and uh, it's really pretty rigid and solid it, it, structurally, but it's also very light. So it makes it pretty good uh, material to work with for something like this because it's pretty easily shaped. And uh, like I said it, earlier, it's kind of ugly when you cut it out. It doesn't, it's not real pretty and neat, uh, but it works. And my purpose here was just to see if my design worked. So I would get this, this board and I would spray some spray glue. I didn't have spray glue, but I had some uh, flex seal stuff like you see on TV. Uh, I had some of that. It's kind of like a spray paint, but it's just clear. And that did just fine. So if you have some clear coat spray paint or something that's clear or maybe even white spray paint, it would probably work too. Uh, but it, it glues uh, paper down to the foam core pretty well. And then uh, I went on to CAD and I designed, I made a design that I thought would work. So here are two full part sets uh, from, the, from the template that I have. So I printed out this piece of paper and then I sprayed the foam core with uh, the, glue, the spray glue and then I put the, the template down on it and pasted it to it. So it's on there pretty good and it's not going to go anywhere. And then you take an X-Acto knife and you cut the dotted lines. You cut out the center and you cut out these two little whoops there goes my focus autofocus isn't working sorry folks but if you cut out these little notches here um, they hold the micro filament tube holder in place and all that is is a straw it's just a coffee straw and it fits down in that divot as you can see and it keeps it from sliding out the bottom and I, I wasn't sure if it would hold it in place, but everything I've done so far, it's, it's working just fine. And then these are the other four parts, two gussets, and two straw holders. And then uh, that's really all it is. Uh, the main thing that you have to remember on this, you know, it spins about one to 3,000 RPMs, somewhere in there. And uh, if things aren't centered and balanced, as good as you can get it uh, if it wobbles too much it will definitely fly apart on you and you'll have pieces flying all over your house so uh, we don't want that especially if there's glass in there so uh, make sure you test it real well with uh, I have q-tips that's the only thing I had to really uh, mass wise it's not the same but size wise it is it's about the same as a microfilament tube so when I get the tubes in, I can take it to the next step and really test it and then see if it's, see if it's going to work. So if you have any questions and you wanted to make one of these, feel free to leave comments below. Yeah, the design, uh, this template, uh, I'll make available. If you want to download it, it'll be in a link in the, one of the comments uh, from me. And there'll be a link to it on my Google Drive. You can just go download it 
whenever you want to. And then everything else is pretty easy to come by. Uh, I don't know really anything else that you might need to know. If I've left something out that you want to know, please feel free to ask me. Also feel free to comment uh, if you want to take this design and change it and modify it to see that it, it might make it better. Please do so. I encourage that. Just let me know what you did. I would like to, maybe I want to use it myself. So I uh, just ask that if you do leave a comment or a question, that you be respectful to everybody. And uh, it doesn't do anyone any good to call names or cop an attitude. Uh, so if, you know, if it's a sincere uh, inquiry or a sincere comment, I'll be happy to entertain that. But uh, I'll probably ignore any comments that are derogatory toward anybody who, who uh, anybody involved, not just toward myself, but anybody. So uh, there is a $7 microfuge. Oh, here, let me go ahead and spin it up for you and let you watch it work. You see, you can see it spins pretty fast. You can also hear it vibrating just a little bit. It's vibrating just a little bit. So I didn't really have a scientific way of centering these. So I could only just get as close as I knew how I could get and hope for the best. And I used, uh, I used a piece of a straw to center uh, the washers and the CD. And I'd stick the straw up next to it like this and then watch the gap. See the gap in the white space there? You watch that grow and shrink, grow and shrink. So when it shrinks, that means that it's got to go this way. And you just keep doing that until until you get it as close to perfect as you can tell just by holding something up against it. That's how I centered the washers, the three washers on there, and of course the CD. And as you can see, it's it's pretty. Let's pick it up again. It's pretty close to. It's pretty close to being centered. You see the. The gap doesn't really grow or shrink. It stays pretty constant. So that's one way to balance it. Uh, or at least center it anyway. And if everything is put in the right place, it should be balanced. So uh, it shouldn't be off balance too bad. So if you can, can center it spatially, then it should be pretty balanced as far as the mass goes. Uh, so there's a $7 uh, centrifuge. Uh, welcome any comments and thanks for watching.